Hi guys, my name is Megan, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my breastfeeding essentials as well as some tips and tricks. I have been breastfeeding my daughter Sophia exclusively for six months. She is six months old now and she hasn't had a bottle of formula once and we've definitely had our ups and downs and I've learned quite a few things along the way so I just wanted to share some things I've learned in case you guys are interested or about to start breastfeeding or having some issues hopefully this will <laughs> hopefully this will help you a little bit and just be of assistance to someone before we get started I wanted to mention that this video is in collaboration with my friend Cecilia over at the dairies she is a new mom as well and she does all kinds of motherhood marriage cloth diapering videos, she does videos on how to weave baby wraps, all kinds of really awesome stuff. I will link her channel down in the description box below if you want to check her out. She's a really cool lady. I have definitely been enjoying her content a lot and I'm really excited to be doing this collaboration with her. She's also going to be doing a video on her breastfeeding essentials as well as her tips and tricks because it's just different for every mother. I'm sure she has some of the same stuff that I do and also some stuff that's a lot different because every woman's breastfeeding journey is it's so different, it just varies so much, which is one of the really cool things about breastfeeding. It even varies in between kids. I'm sure my next child won't breastfeed the same way that Sophia does. Ah. Okay, thank you. So let's get right into it. First on the list is have lots of water on hand. I don't know if every mom experiences this, but when you're breastfeeding, especially in the beginning, like the first month, you feel like the Sahara Desert. You are so thirsty all the time. It's probably because your body's not used to putting off as much fluid with breastfeeding and you just, oh my goodness, that feeling of being thirsty while you're breastfeeding isn't like anything else, it's crazy. Also, have plenty of snacks on hand because it won't be quite as hungry as you are thirsty, but you're putting off a lot more energy, creating food for your child as well. So have a lot of snacks on hand, easy snacks, granola bars are some of my favorites, banana, just whatever you can find that's high in fiber or high in protein. Another thing that I really like using while I'm breastfeeding is mother's milk tea. I actually have a recipe for this that went out I think earlier this week so I will link that in the description as well as in the cards up above. It's just this tea that you make that increases your milk supply if you're having which in the beginning I'm sure like I think most people have oversupply in the beginning but it's later once your milk supply evens out if you're having trouble having enough that's a really great way now that Sophia is sleeping through the night pretty consistently, it's definitely gone lower, so I like to drink some of that to just make sure it stays up. Since I've started breastfeeding, I've definitely noticed that it helps to eat like a lot of oatmeal or high fiber foods. I like quinoa. I pretty much have oatmeal for breakfast like every morning. So I've definitely been trying a lot of different ways to make it. I like to change it up with like baked oatmeal and putting peanut butter in it. And so there's a lot of ways you can make it so that you don't get tired of it but that's really helpful for milk supply. So especially in the beginning when you're first just learning how to breastfeed, I like to have like two spots, like one in the living room and one in our bedroom since I'm gonna be laying in bed a lot where I just have like a bin with everything I'm gonna need, like a snack, some water, a diaper, some wipes, just everything I might need just right in arm's reach so that I don't have to get up and disturb the baby because they're gonna be nursing a lot at the beginning. Another thing that's really essential is breast pads because in the beginning you are making an oversupply and so you're gonna have a lot of leakage. Some people leak through the entire time they breastfeed. I'm lucky enough that I only leaked the first few months I think but you definitely want to change these out a lot. If you're soaking them really fast you don't want to leave something wet on your breast because it could create like a yeast infection and be bad so I would change these out a lot. I have two different kinds but there's a lot of them so that I didn't have to be washing them like every day to not run out so I will link both the kinds that I have down below. So then you're going to want some sort of nursing friendly bra. I actually have a bra that's made for breastfeeding because it has the, the clip right here and then this comes down. I use this for the first few months especially when my milk supply was really big and I needed a little bit extra support with this. But I've actually switched to just these Calvin Klein bras. This one's a little bit too small. My two ones that are a little bit bigger are dirty right now, but this is just an example. So this is just stretchy. Neither of these have underwire, which I find that is really uncomfortable while I'm breastfeeding. But if you are someone who needs a lot more support, that is totally fine. But I actually just wear this, and then when I need to nurse, I just pull it down. And that works just fine. Like, 
you don't need to spend a lot of extra money on an actual nursing bra because those are quite expensive and I find that they're unnecessary and I actually prefer using just a cheap old like kind of a sports bra. The other thing that I loved having was a haka. I think that's how to pronounce it. This is a breast pump and you just suction it onto your boob. I am a one side nurser. A lot of people nurse the baby on both sides each time they breastfeed but I only nurse on one side and then the next few hours when she needs to nurse again, I nurse her on the other side. And that has worked well for us. It's way more convenient, I've found. You just nurse her the whole time, and then she's done, and you burp her. And that's been really good. I use this on the other breast while she's nursing on this side. I would use it on this side to catch anything that comes out, because when the one side that she's nursing on lets down, the other side lets down as well. And for a long time, I was just letting that soak into breast pads and go, letting it go to waste, which I'm really sad about. So. What you do is you just fold this part over, you put it over the nipple with it suctioned like this, and then you let this flap over like that, and then you can suction it on. And it just stays right there really well, and it catches all the extra. When she goes to the night, I can pump with this. You don't have to just wait for the letdown. This will actually start the letdown, so it's so, so handy, and not very expensive either. You don't have to spend a ton on an actual electrical pump. Then if you're pumping or using a haka, then you can either store it and they actually have like plastic storage baggies that are made specifically for breast milk. Some of them actually hook onto the electric breast pump so it just pumps right into the bag, which is really handy. But I didn't go out and buy specific bags. I actually just use pint mason jars. I don't use quartz because I don't want to have to thaw out that much at once if she needs to use them. So pints. I really like to use and I just keep them in the freezer. Another thing that's really handy is having nursing friendly clothes and that doesn't necessarily mean clothes that are designed for nursing. The shirts that have like the flap where you pull one thing up and one thing down, those things are actually not very attractive to wear like at all. You look like kind of a big potato. So I have found actually a few pieces that look pretty good. One of them is actually a nightgown but I use it as a long skirt. It looks like a daytime shirt but I really especially like it while I'm pregnant because it has enough room for my big belly and, and then it has the nursing access, which is really handy. But most of the time for the day, I just wear a regular shirt and like a tank top camisole underneath. So I pull the regular shirt up and I pull the camisole down and then that cover has a lot of coverage so that you don't really even need a nursing cover a lot. If you're brave, which I'm not really brave, I haven't really done that in public more than like once or twice if I forgot to bring my nursing cover because I just feel really nervous about that. But as long as the baby's latched on, you have like full coverage. So then that brings me to my next one is a nursing cover or a blanket. For the first five or six months, I just used a muslin blanket and you just have these around anyway because they're super handy for anything. Wiping up spit up, using them as nursing covers, using them as car seat covers, using them to swallow your baby. So what I would just do is I would take two corners and just tie them. and then it goes over and you've got a nursing cover. And that is a really good, cheap way to have a nursing cover because these aren't super expensive and you're gonna use them for other stuff anyway. But once she was like five or six months old, I actually did buy an actual nursing cover and it's actually really handy, I love it. So it's this square, it actually has fringe on the bottom. It's super cute, it has a hole right here for your head. But this thing is really handy, I actually like it better than the blanket, but the blanket works really well too if you don't wanna spend extra money on an actual nursing cover. Another thing that I found really handy was coconut oil. And now this is for if you have cracked or bleeding nipples, you can put a little bit of coconut oil on it to soothe it. I actually didn't have much of a problem with that. I never got cracked or bleeding nipples. They just got a little bit, of, bit dry, a little bit sore. So I just used coconut oil, straight coconut oil on it. I will link the recipe down below that I would have used if I had a worse problem with that. It has more things. I think it has like witch hazel oil, maybe shea butter, it has some essential oils, it's really good. So I will link to that one I would have used, but for me coconut oil worked just great. And this is actually safe for the baby to eat if you forget to wipe it off before she nurses, this is totally safe for the baby to consume as well. So now a couple of tips that I learned from doing this for a while. Now the start of breastfeeding is pretty tough. It's pretty painful. Even if you don't ever get cracked or bleeding nipples, it is pretty painful. I remember when she would latch on, I would have to grab onto something with my other hand because it hurts so bad. And that's pretty normal. It does hurt at the beginning. Some people don't really have a problem with it, which is really nice. You guys are lucky. But it is so worth it. 
you just gotta push through the tough start. As long as it's not like an abnormal amount of pain, some people do have problems with breastfeeding. Even normally, women do have quite a bit of pain when they're first starting, so you just gotta push through, it's so worth it. Another tip is to just relax. I had a lot of trouble with getting my milk to let down because I was so stressed that it wouldn't let down, that it didn't let down. Like, it's kind of this uh, bad cycle where you're worried that it won't let down, you won't have enough milk, and then because you're so tense and worried, it won't let down. So you just gotta relax, put on a show, just think about something else. Just don't worry about it. You will have enough milk, you'll create enough milk for your baby. But it's kind of funny that that does affect it so much. So just, just relax, you're doing a good job, mama. Uh, another thing is don't fret about fluctuating supply. My milk supply is all over the place still, even though I've been doing it for six months. Sometimes I'm engorged and she can't even drink all the milk that there is, which I actually prefer. I prefer being a little bit uncomfortable and engorged because I know I have enough. I love the feeling of knowing I have plenty. And then sometimes if she starts like sleeping through the night, she doesn't do it all the time, but a lot of times she'll sleep through the night and that makes my supply go down quite a bit and they feel really loose and empty, but there's always going to be some in there. And sometimes it takes the baby crying at your breast to create more, that actually really helps to create more. You can drink some mother's milk tea, there's different things that you can do to help with that. When your milk supply is nice and high, you can pump to keep it high. There's a lot of different things you can do, but it's very normal for your milk supply to fluctuate a lot, so don't freak out when it does. Even now, when it goes down, I'm like, oh, I hope it goes back up. Like, I still haven't learned. I'm ridiculous, but that is normal. One tip that I learned from my mom, actually, is that if you feel like you have a clogged duct, like your breast has a ton of different milk ducts, and sometimes one can get clogged and it feels just like really, really rock hard and like the rest of it may feel soft and there's just one spot that's like really hard. And you don't want to let it continue that way because it can get clogged and engorged and it can actually turn into mastitis, which thankfully I haven't had mastitis, but I have had like kind of a slightly clogged duct which is, I think it's kind of normal at the beginning to your your breasts are just figuring out how much milk to produce and sometimes they don't really know quite what to do yet. So what you can do to help prevent mastitis, and actually I think this is what you do when you have mastitis, one of the things you do when you have it, is you put the baby's chin facing where the duct is. So if your duct is, the clogged duct is at the top of your breast, I would lay her on the bed and then I would like She'd be laying with her head that way, and I would get over the top of her with my head that way, and let her nurse with her chin facing the claw. And that cleared it right up. I did it like five times and it was gone. It's amazing. And I had no idea that that would help before my mom told me. So if you're worried about having a claw, it doesn't hurt to move around your positions just so that one spot doesn't get clogged or anything. I like the sideline position, just the regular position where they're in your, in your arms like this and then laying them on the bed, just varying it, especially at the beginning, helps a lot with not having any place especially uncomfortable. So I think that is all for my tips and tricks and essentials right now. That I'm sure this is gonna be kind of a long video and that's not even everything that I've learned. I love breastfeeding so much. It's such a special experience to have with your child. There's so many things that you can do to help it be easier. I hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to go check out Cecilia's channel and her video as well. I, again, I will link as many products as I can down in the description as many as I can find and her channel. So go check all those out. I post three new videos a week on Monday, Thursday, and Saturday, and I will see you next time. Bye.